All right, everybody, we will get back uh, to that in just a moment. Want to go out to, to New Mexico, getting an update for the first time on camera from officials talking about the Alec Baldwin movie set, Deadly Shooting. Let's listen. Good morning, everybody, and welcome to the uh, Santa Fe County Sheriff's Office. I'm Sheriff Adan Mendoza. First and foremost, first and foremost, I'd like to offer our condolences to the Hutchins family, a speedy recovery to Mr. Souza, and our concern for the safety of all the men and women in the film industry. On Thursday, October 21st, 2001, at 1.48 p.m., we were dispatched to Bonanza Creek Ranch in reference to a 911 call advising that two people had been shot on a movie set. The first deputy arrived at 2 o'clock p.m. and EMS arrived at 2.01 p.m. It was later de determined that Helena Hutchins, the director of cine cinematography, and Joel Souza, the director, had been shot while rehearsing a scene on the movie Rust. During the initial investigation, it was determined that actor-producer Alec Baldwin was the person that fired the weapon. We identified two other people that handled and or inspected the loaded firearm prior to Baldwin firing the weapon. These two individuals are armorer Hannah Reed Gutierrez and assistant director David Halls. All three individuals have been cooperative in the investigation and have provided statements. Over the last few days, our investigative team has been working diligently to conduct interviews, execute search warrants, and collect and process evidence from the scene. During this process, we determined that there were a limited amount of movie set staff present in the area where the actual incident took place. Although there were approximately 100 people on set. Through the execution of search warrants, we have collected about 600 items of evidence. These include, but are not limited to, three firearms, approximately 500 rounds of ammunition, and several pieces of clothing and accessories. We believe that we have in our possession the firearm that was fired by Mr. Baldwin. This is, the fire, this is the firearm we believe discharged the bullet. We also believe that we have the spent shell casing from the bullet that was fired from the gun. The actual lead projectile that was fired has been recovered from the shoulder of Mr. Souza. The projectile was recovered by medical personnel where he was being treated and turned over to the sheriff's office as evidence. We regard this specific spent casing and recovered projectile to be the live round that was fired from the re revolver by Mr. Baldwin. We have recovered what we believe to be possible additional live rounds on set. All the previous mentioned items, along with other items of evidence, will be submitted to the FBI Crime Lab in Quantico, Virginia for analysis. We are working thoroughly to gather all the facts of the investigation, continue interviews, and further, further analyze the pro and process the evidence. I want to ensure the victims, their families, and the public that we are conducting a thorough and objective investigation. In reference to possible charges, it's too early right now in the investigation to comment on charges at this point. The investigation will continue and if the sheriff's office determines during our investigation a crime has occurred and probable cause exists, arrest, an arrest or arrests will be made and charges will be filed. Otherwise, we will complete our investigation and forward the full investigation and evidence to the district attorney for review. Before turning it over to the district attorney, I'd like to thank our investi investigations division for all their hard work and diligence in this case the Santa Fe County Public Safety Department, EMS, and RECC, 
and the local FBI office for their support and assistance in this case. Also, uh, the district attorney's office staff that has been working side by side with us during this case. I'd like to introduce first judicial district attorney, Mary Carmick Altweiss. Good morning. My name is Mary Carmack Altweiss, and I am the first judicial district attorney. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I, it, which includes, my jurisdiction includes Santa Fe County. I echo the sentiments of Sheriff Mendoza and want to send my condolences to the family, friends, and tight-knit film community impacted by this tragedy. We mourn the loss of Helena Hutchins and the injury to Joel Sousa. I also specifically want to thank the Santa Fe County Sheriff's Department for so thoroughly and actively investigating this incident. Our office appreciates your hard work and together we will ensure that this investigation is held to the highest standards. I speak to the prosecutorial perspective here and I must emphasize that a complete and thorough investigation is critical to DA review. We take the corroborated facts and evidence and connect it to New Mexico law. And we are not at that juncture yet. If the facts and evidence and law support charges, then I will initiate prosecution at that time. I am a prosecutor that was elected in part because I do not make rash decisions and I do not rush to judgment. I rely on facts supported by evidence, cooperative and credible witnesses, and I cannot stress the importance of allowing the Santa Fe County Sheriff's Office to continue with their quality investigation that is both serious and complex. So at this point, we will open it up to questions. What kind of bullet was found? Sheriff, Sheriff can we ask you, so you said that a live round was recovered. Based on the witness interviews that you've done, can you tell us what you learned about how live ammunition was on the set uh, and how it made its way into that firearm? You learned that there was possible target practice maybe earlier that day. What have you learned on that front? So I think what we've learned is, is we suspect that there was other live rounds that were found on the set. I won't comment further on how they got there. That's still part of a, a this, this investigation is active, so I won't comment on how they got there. But we know, we suspect that they are there. That will be up, it will be determined when, when uh, testing is done by the crime lab in reference to whether or not they are officially live rounds or not. Sheriff, there, how did two people inspect this gun and not notice that there's a live round? That's that's uh, what we're trying to determine. Um, the the people that inspected or handled the the firearm when it was loaded uh, before it got to Mr. Baldwin, we're interviewing, and there's some follow-up questions that we need to do. So there's uh, further investigation, further interviews, and uh, and we'll get we're going to try and determine exactly how that happened and uh, if they should have known that there was a live round in that firearm. No, I, I said there was a total of 500 rounds of ammunition. That is a mix of blanks, dummy rounds, and what we are suspecting, live rounds. What type of bullet was found in the director's shoulder that was recovered at the hospital? Well, we know it was a lead projectile. It's still to be determined by the ballistic analysis by the FBI crime lab exactly uh, what the weight of that bullet is. Uh, maybe uh, whether or not it was fired from that actual firearm, there'll be uh, the riflings and things will be uh, tested and uh, and compared. So there's a lot of testing that, that needs to be done to ensure that that projectile left that firearm. And sure, so that's what we suspect. Sure, as the man who pulled the trigger and as a producer on the movie, does Alec Baldwin himself face the potential of criminal charges? And if the DA could perhaps follow up with that as well. That may be a, a, a question better answered by the district attorney. Um, all options are on the table at this point. I'm not, take, I'm not commenting on charges, whether they will be filed or not, or on whom. So the answer is we, we cannot answer that question yet until we complete a more thorough but investigation. But there is the potential for Alec Baldwin himself to face charges because you have not ruled the man. No one has been ruled out at this point. Is Alec Baldwin, is Alec Baldwin, is Alec Baldwin, is, sorry, is Alec Baldwin considered a person of interest right now? No, that's you. <laughs> he's he's obviously the person that fired the weapon. So we're going to continue interviewing and getting to uh, getting the facts of his statements and the evidence and the case 
and possible witnesses or anybody that has any information. So right now, he is an active part of this investigation. Is he likely to be re-interviewed? Uh, in, in, is he likely to be re-interviewed? We hope so. Uh, as of right now, um, everybody is cooperating with statements and interviews. Sure. What, 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 you know, the what the next step is? You, you mentioned this is an ongoing investigation, but specifically for your department, what does that mean specifically? What, do you, what else do you have to do? So basically, um, there are a lot of interviews that have to be done. Okay, We've determined that there were a limited amount of people uh, or, or movie staff that were actually um, in the vicinity of the incident. So there's there's also was approximately 90 people on the movie set itself. So there's a lot of interviews that need to be done uh, still in this in this case, and that's going to be important. Um, there's a lot of uh, facts that are that are floating around. I, I wouldn't say facts. There's maybe facts and rumors that are floating around, and it's our job to uh, to figure out if they're if they are facts or rumors. Well, clear, wasn't it actionable that was fired? Not a blank, not a dummy. It was like what people think of when you say bullet. So. We would consider it a live round, um, a bullet live, because it did fire from the weapon and obviously caused the death of Mrs. Hutchin and and injured Mr. S uh, Souza. Sheriff, how much will you take into account the previous accusations that were made against Mr. Souza? Because that's the one that was brought to light that the Well, that's up to the district attorney to determine how much that's going to weigh, but we are going to follow up on some of those statements that are made um, that there were other incidents. Uh, we definitely want to speak to anybody uh, that has any information in reference to safety issues on further sets or whether uh, there were uh, other issues, and we would encourage them to call the sheriff's office at 505-986-2490 with any information they may have. Um, so we can get a, a, a good idea of what the totality of the circumstances are on this set and what's happening in the industry. And that is something that will play into our legal analysis when we get the completed investigation from the Sheriff's Department. It obviously could play into whether charges get filed or not. Could you, speak, could you speak broadly about negligence and uh, the things? I know you said it's too early to comment on charges, but can you speak broadly to what your office is examining when it comes to an accidental shooting versus weighing negligence? Like what your office specifically looks at when we get to that point? When we get to that point, yes, I will speak to it. I don't know that we are at, at that point yet. Um, because again, we can't say that it was negligence, how many people were involved. We can't say that with any certainty at this point. So when we get to that point, yes, I will speak to that. Um, I will I will talk in reference to the caliber of the actual weapon that was fired by Mr. Baldwin. That uh, that firearm was an uh, F. Lee Pieta Long Colt 45 revolver. Were there other rounds of ammunition in the gun you believe that was fired? There there were other there was other ammunition in the gun that we believe uh, was fired by Mr. Uh, Baldwin. And it was it was live live round. Round. Were those live rounds? Were those live rounds? As of right now, there were three firearms that were located on uh, the set within uh, close proximity to the uh, to the incident. Um, we're still going to determine. We'll send the, the firearm that was fired by Mr. Baldwin to the crime lab and do a functionality test. Obviously, it did fire a live round. Um, the other weapon is uh, a single action army 45 revolver. That one looks like there's some modification to the cylinder. It may not be functioning, but that won't, that'll be determined by the crime lab. The other firearm is a plastic, non-functioning revolver. Sheriff, 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 can you talk about, thank you. Can you talk about tensions on the set reports? People, I mean, obviously a crew had walked out and six hours before the accident and um, people drinking or crew members drinking the night before, lax conditions. 
Can you talk about that and specifically was there tension about that? I won't st- I won't talk about specifics, but we are aware of those um, of those rumors or those statements that have been made, and we're, we'll we'll do we're going to do the best to track those down. Sheriff, can, Sheriff, Sheriff, can you confirm, can you Sheriff, confirm whether the camera was rolling when the shot was fired? There was a search warrant that was issued in reference to any camera footage. Um, there was camera footage, but I can say that there was no footage of the actual incident. Sheriff, Sheriff, for clarity, how much, how much is Mr. Alex Baldwin's role as a producer factor into uh, the, the investigation? How much responsibility do you think he actually had as a producer, and how did this influence the investigation of possible charges? I think once we gather all the statements of fact, once we do all the interviews, then that will be weighed by the district attorney to see exactly, uh, you know, what. Uh, you know what weight that's going to give in reference to her decision to making charges. Not at this time. Sheriff, can you please give us an update on Alex Baldwin in particular from law enforcement view? How he's been so far? Um, just generally, he has been cooperative in this investigation. Can you describe his demeanor? What are you doing? I won't comment on 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 my perception of his demeanor. I won't comment on that. I'll say right now, until un, until it's proven by the crime lab, it's a suspected live round that was fired, but it did fire from the weapon and it did, did cause, in, cause injury. So um, that would lead us to believe that it was a live round. Mr. Attorney, I have a question over here. Sheriff, you're obviously responsible for safety in this county. Just curious about your thoughts about the use of real weapons on the set. Well, obviously, uh, I think the industry has has a, had a record recently of being safe. I think there was some complacency on this set, and uh, I think there are some safety issues that need to be addressed by the industry and possibly by the state of New Mexico. But I'll leave that up to uh, to the industry and the state to determine what those need to be. So, to Mr. Attorney, over here. So, have you ever covered a case? Or is there precedent for a case like this in Santa Fe County where you have somebody who fired a gun? Did it, it was clearly accidental, he, well, he thought it was a cold gun, but other people loaded that gun where it's kind of not the person who actually fired it, but could be held liable. Is there any kind of precedent for a case like this in your county? No. <laughs> no, there's no precedent whatsoever. To your investigation. I mean, this is very, it's a tricky legal battle. Uh, It it is a very complex case. Um, It will require lots of legal uh, research and analysis and review. That's what my team is here for, and that's that's how we're assisting the sheriffs at this point. Um, That said, again, we don't know how that's going to play in until we get that that complete investigation. Sheriff, was the projectile taken taken from the director's shoulder, removed from the director's shoulder? Is that the same projectile that killed Elena Hutchinson? We will leave that up to the uh, Office of Medical Investigator to determine, but uh, it's it's apparently the same round. Going back to the question about uh, whether there was target practice on set, are you investigating whether people were recreationally shooting on the ranch property aside from filming? We are aware of those statements, and uh, we are investigating um, whether or not that is true or it isn't true. And I would encourage anybody that has any information that any target practicing or any firearm was discharged um, away from the movie set or or for practice or or for for whatever reason to to contact the sheriff's office. Sheriff, is there any reason why live rounds would be on What do you set? think happened here then? I'm sorry? You said two of the three guns appear to be non-functioning on that table. What do you think unfolded? Well, I think the facts are clear. Uh, a weapon was handed to uh, Mr. Baldwin. The weapon is functional and fired a live round, killing Ms. Hutchins and injuring Mr. Souza. Yeah, the latest search warrant that was just released through the magistrate's office, it, it notes that Hannah Gutierrez Reed and Joel and um, the AD that handed the gun all said live rounds should never be on set, yet there clearly were live rounds on set. So. This feels almost like a false statement to police. How, if, if, if the armor is going to say that there should never be a live round on set, yet there was, what's your next step as a law enforcement investigator? We know there was one live round as far as we're concerned on set. We're going to determine whether we suspect that there were other live rounds, but that's up to the testing. But right now, we're going to determine how those got there, why they were there, because they shouldn't have been there.
I'm sorry, who were you asking about? He's been cooperative, but I'm not exactly sure of his, his presence whereabouts. Can you speak on the path of the gun that expired and how long it was expired and who will have their honor about the chain of custody before it was picked up by the assistant? Yeah, I won't talk about the specifics uh, of, of that. That's still um, uh, being investigated. Can you speak yeah, on the timeline of your investigation of when you anticipate that this may you know, wrap up and, and we'll get more information about whether charges may be filed? Yeah, I don't, I, I'm, I'll stay away from an actual timeline. I know, you know, based like on what I said, there's uh, several individuals that need to be interviewed. And from those interviews comes new information that we need to track down. So I don't want to put a timeline on it. I want, I want everybody to know that we're working diligently. Uh, our investigative team is uh, to wrap this up uh, thoroughly and, uh, and completely. And so uh, there is no timeline. We want to get all the facts, get all the statements, and present that to the district attorney's office for review. We have. Do you, do you expect to re-interview either of those two? As questions come up, uh, other information comes to light. Um, there may be follow-up interviews, and and so I would uh, uh, suspect that uh, we would want to re-interview them. Sheriff, Sheriff, you said there was a small number of people inside the area where this happened. How come it's taken so long, almost a week now, to get all of those interviews done? Well, there was a small number of people within the set area where the incident took place. Those people have been interviewed. I'm talking about 100 people um, in, in the on scene uh, in different areas. So those people uh, that were... Uh, in close proximity to the incident, they've been uh, interviewed. And just for clarity, inside the revolver that Alex Walter used, were there other live rounds inside the chamber? Not that we're aware of. Uh, you know how many rounds were in that chamber? Uh, you, the sheriff used the word complacency on set. What is the bridge, and how, how much do you have to go beyond complacency to get to criminal negligence, hypothetically speaking? I'm not going to answer hypotheticals today. I will say there there is a bridge and it, it will take uh, many more facts, corroborated facts, before we can get to that criminal negligence standard. And again, they're, they're gathering that as we speak. Complacency in itself does not amount to criminal behavior. I can't say that without, without specifically legally researching that, but my off-the-cuff answer is no. And for the sheriff, for the sheriff your experience with firearms, Sheriff, what is your view of such complacency on the set of a movie? Any, anytime firearms are involved, there's it, the safety is is paramount. I'll, I'll say that anybody knows that. If you know anything about firearms, anytime a firearm is around or about, uh, safety is paramount. Does it anger you that light rounds were being used on that set? Um, I, I don't let my emotions get involved. This is an investigation. We we rely on the facts. Thank you. How many witnesses were actually in that room? You said a small number of people. How, what is a small number? The information that I received from the detectives, there were 16 people in, in uh, the vicinity of where the incident took place. Uh, thank you for all your questions. I, I really appreciate it, but I think that's all the questions we're taking today. Unless the DA would like to entertain no, any more. We're good. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you.